Hello there, welcome to my views and news. Two news stories for you. First one is about Ethiopia air tier tensions regarding Red Sea. Uh, Ethiopian PM Abi opened uh, Red Sea's Pandora's box a few days ago. Now we're seeing a barrage of criticism against Ethiopian government. Eritrean activists, Eritrean intelligence agency backed activists, journalists and media outlets are after Ethiopian government, Ethiopian PM Abi. Allegations of new military recruitment in Ethiopia to retake Assam. Allegations coming from Eritrean journalists. What are they claiming? There is this new recruitment going to start in Ethiopia. Which region? It's a very important question. Which region is going to proactively, wholeheartedly support PMRB's position if, if, if the war between Ethiopia and Eritrea, if any war between the countries broke out? Secondly, unknown number of Chinese workers uh, abducted in the Oromia region of Ethiopia, where were they who abducted them? Is Ola behind this abduction? Uh, let's start with the first news story about uh, Ethiopia Eritrea tension. People say, Sajid, Isasevaki, Abi, they just play games, they are on the same page, they just play people, so don't just uh, uh, take pains to report about this conflict. They are playing uh, the people. I don't agree, by the way. Uh, maybe people know more. What I know, uh, I think, is that uh, they're not playing games. There are visible tensions. Uh, the two are not on good terms. Ethiopia are not on good terms. That is my analysis. Maybe I'm wrong. One point before I start this new story. Now, we know that when PM Abi spoke uh, almost a week ago, the target of his talk was Eritrea. But he tried to hide his intentions by taking uh, a holistic approach, saying that uh, Ethiopia should have access to the sea without naming Eritrea. Now, while he could not hide the real target because Eritrea knew very well that uh, his talk was directed against Eritrea. While he could not uh, hide his intentions, he alienated others. He alienated uh, groups in Djibouti and Somalia. So, Eritrea found opportunity to form allies. Though bulk of criticism against Ethiopian PM, uh, Ethiopian government is coming from Eritrea, but because of PM Abi's uh, move, uh, Ethiopian, uh, Ethiopian government is coming under criticism from three directions, Somalia, uh, Djibouti, Eritrea, maybe Somalia land too, but so far Somalia. Djibouti and Eritrea. Had he tried to single out Eritrea, he would have uh, uh, managed to keep Djibouti and Somalia away from this conflict. But he tried to be a little unclear. He did not want to be seen as a declaration of war from him on Eritrea, so that he did not name Eritrea openly. But that led to formation of uh, an unofficial alliance against Ethiopian government by Somalia, Djibouti, Eriti, all have issued statements rejecting PM Abi's call uh, and all spoke about territorial integrity and sovereignty. So all rejected uh, the Prime Minister's talk. Now, Eritrean journalists are reporting. They are saying that uh, we have to report what they are saying, why? Because these people are very close to the written government. We know them for years. They are backed by written government. They are backed by written intelligence agencies. Uh, I won't say they are on the payroll of written government, but they are the government, you can say. Because government launches them. 
when government irritant government when it does not seem it does not want to be uh, involved directly so this barrage of allegations which is coming from irritant activists behind this criticism is irritant government an irritian journalist close to irritian government works for irritian government has made some claims he says that uh, in two regions of ethiopia government officials have started a campaign to rally the people on a support issue which regions oromia region and southern regions maybe two regions in the south newly created and the old one snnpr in these regions prosperity party members lower level middle level they are working on the ground they have been directed by the party to take people on board to take people into confidence and they are uh, telling the people to support the government on this issue so they are trying to create a sort of consensus within community to take a position to support the government secondly ground is being prepared for military recruitment in these regions recruitment on the issue of asab these prosperity party officials are meeting with people parents elders telling them that this is the time to work to sacrifice for ethiopia so commit to send your sons to military to fight uh eritrea if eritrea did not listen to ethiopia's peaceful demands for a support this is coming from an eritrean journalist almost quote and quote i shared that with you uh and it may it is coming from eritrean government it's not that a journalist on his own said something no there is government behind what is being said by eritrean activists i have to repeat it again because some people say that uh, this is just false information which is being shared no it is part of a campaign against ethiopian government which we are seeing in social media are these allegations true or false we don't know uh if ethiopia is planning a war on eritrea obviously it will have to start uh, recruitment i have been analyzing ethiopian military capabilities i told you ethiopian military is very overstretched it is not in a position to start a new war maybe that is why uh, military government they have this uh, Uh, they they realize that they need new recruitments new recruits and after that they can think of war let's try to find something from the ground in romia romia spm rb support base we cannot deny that though uh, public opinion on the issue of uh, a support could be divided but interestingly romia players are silent i have not heard from jawar no statement from romo federalist congress no statement from romo liberation army all over liberation front uh romo elders romo government is with the prime minister uh shimala sabdisa was heard saying on aricha that next aricha would be celebrated on the red sea so government is on board but there are other players to in romia and romia and southern regions could support pmr we though we cannot say that he'll get overwhelming support for war from there but let's see uh, let's see how ethiopian government responds to these allegations i think ethiopian government uh, is not sitting idle by the way the propaganda or the campaign by ethiopian government run through state television channels uh, is intensifying propaganda about propaganda or you can say narrative launched by the government that 
Ethiopia needs uh, access to the sea, it is an urgent matter, etc. Secondly, viewers, kidnapping, uh, abduction in the Rome region of Ethiopia, where kidnapping, kidnapping for ransom or rampant, uh, the incident happened of uh, in Isheva zone of Oromia, foreigners have been abducted. Unknown number of Chinese workers abducted from a cement factory in East Shiva zone of Oromia. In East Shiva, there is Fitche town, main towns in East Shiva, and reportedly, Ola Oromo Liberation Army fighters tried to take control of Fitche. There was a heavy fighting in the outskirts of Fitche for hours on Thursday. Uh, military and Ola were involved in this clash. Three to four kilometers away from town, it means uh, close to town. So businesses were closed, uh, remained closed in the town, shops as well. And then Ola fighters managed to enter a cement factory there, East Cement, which was established by Chinese, I think, uh, around more than, more than a decade ago, I think around 17 years ago, 16, 17 years ago. And there, the Ola fighters reportedly kidnapped Chinese workers. And fighting then stopped and Ola fighters, they took these Chinese workers with them to unknown location. Now, efforts underway for the release of these Chinese workers. Second time that uh, attack on a cement factory happened and foreign workers uh, kidnapped. I think the Gnote cement factory in Ishiva also came under attack a few months ago. From there, some foreigners were kidnapped. And whenever people are kidnapped in Romia, we know that they have to pay ransom. I am not aware of any incident, any big incident in which Ethiopian military launched operation, successful operation for the release of abductees. Whenever people were abducted in the past, whether foreigners or locals, ransom had to be paid. I think factory workers were arrested too. In Dagnote, most of the abductees were factory workers. Chinese were abducted from other locations too in Romia. So this time too, I think we'll see uh, negotiations and ransom will have to be paid. That just shows how strong Romia government is. Ola can carry out, at, uh, one correction, this uh, factory is in North Shore, not in Ishua. I think Dagnote is in Ishua. This factory, East Cement, is in North Shore zone of Oromia. North Shore shares border with uh, Amhara too, and we have seen attacks from Fano uh, fighters on North Shore Oromia. Let's see. Uh, and by the way, Ola fighters don't uh, kill foreigners. They release them. Uh, they kidnapped some Indian Chinese in the past too. They showed them, then they released them. Yes, they'll demand ransom, not from Chinese government. They'll demand ransom maybe from go-between, from government people, and they'll release them. That is what happened in the past. I did some video last year when some Chinese were abducted and released by Ola fighters. Thank you for watching.